Do you want to learn how to get retired, stay retired, and enjoy your life to the fullest? This is the Retire Happy Podcast with certified financial planner professional, Jeremy Finger. Jeremy will be your guide to happiness as he discusses the art and science of retirement, breaking down the complicated information to help you make good financial decisions without worry or burden. Now, onto the show. Hello and welcome to Retire Happy with Jeremy Finger. Jeremy, what's going on? I just uh, live in life and trying to help people make the next right decision. <laughs> <laughs> I How about you, buddy? A couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, what's that? I said I could have used you a couple of weeks ago. I felt like I made a few <laughs> wrong decisions. Uh, we we moved. We moved. Did you really? Oh my goodness! Yeah. Man, I, that's got to be a I, stressful situation there. Well, you know, you, you give a bunch of stuff away, which is a fun thing to do. But you're like, man, there's so much more stuff that I should just get rid of. And so I'm it, like, there, there's three levels of purges. When you plan to move, when you actually move, and then six months later, you're like, I haven't entered that box yet. And therefore, I need to get rid of it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that third one was going to be when you die. And then you don't have to worry about your stuff because that's how it Well, that might be the other one. That yeah. might be the other one. So what are yeah. we talking about today? We're talking about um, Social Security and how to think about that and make maximum benefit of that for retirement. Okay. So Social Security, you know, I'm... Man, I hate to say this. I'm not that far off. I mean, I'm I'm quite a few years, but you know, I'm I'm almost fifty, Jeremy. And so that means I've really you don't look a day over seventy. You oh, don't thank look you. A day I appreciate over. that. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <clears throat> For those that don't know, he and I can see each other, and that's just you know those remarks just cut deep, Jeremy. They cut deep. Yeah. You know, it, you know so this is something I thought about because my parents are both still alive. Um, okay. My father's eighty-two. My mom's seventy-two, and so th we've had this conversation with them as well. You know, to make sure that they maximize their benefit and all that. And that's kind of where I learned a lot of this. So I'm excited to see what you have to bring to the table today. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So first, I'd like for the uh, listeners to be thinking about Social Security. A lot of times, people say, "Well, hey, just give it to me now," and and they go off their on their merry way, but mm -hmm. they really need to think about social security as an asset. All right. So, you know, a lot of times retirees thinking about, well, Oh, how should I have my money invested and, and, and work these different things, but they may not think about social security being an asset. Mm -hmm. And that's a tremendous, that, that, that is a, a big mistake. All right. Yeah. Because like if, if they're claiming social security at age 62, um, they're likely taking a 30% haircut on full retirement age. Okay. So, and if you think of the income that you can get off of social security, and I'm going to just go in general terms, if you take a 4% withdrawal rate on your assets, social security could be looked at as a $750,000 asset. Wow. Okay. Wow. So if you're taking a 30% haircut on that, that's $225,000. And so everybody's worried about a bear market or their investments going down, but they may be voluntarily taking a 30% haircut or a bear market on their mm. social security benefit. Yeah. So it doesn't the, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but social security, it, it varies when your full retirement age, depending on what age you are, correct? That's correct. That that's correct. So, so if you were, uh, depending on when you were born, um, mm -hmm. your full retirement age may be 66. It may be 66 in one month or 66 in two months. But the, the latest full retirement age currently is 67. 67. So and so if you the, the if your full retirement age is 67 and you're taking age 62, you're going to have a larger uh, yeah. haircut than if you were full retirement age 66 and then taking it 62. And it okay. works in reverse, if I'm not mistaken. That's also true. Yeah. This, yeah, this is this is also true. So what a lot of people think of, and this is also an, another mistake, is that if you delay full retirement age, every year you delay your full retirement age benefit, your social security goes up by roughly 8% per year. That's a great return. Yeah, it is. So from top to bottom, from a, let's call it a 30% haircut to... Um, the 8% increases per year, you're looking at roughly 77% increase between Jesus. 62 and 70. That's huge. That's huge. So it's, a, it's a giant difference. And, and if you think about it like an asset, it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, I might be able to add hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, to my social security benefit if I work this thing properly. Now, j just in the brief piece of this conversation that we've already had, there are 
dozens upon dozens of ways to claim Social Security for one person. And then we, we talk about spouses. There's two people involved and, and there's got to be a lot of strategic planning when it comes to, you know, who claims when, who claims what, you know, depending on what their different ages are, so on and so forth. So before you move on and bring up the, you know, that next point, I kind of wanted you to talk about that, the decisions. I want to make sure the audience knows that you're incredibly open to conversations and helping people figure this out, you know, and, and figure out maybe the best way for them. So I want to just let them know that you're going to give contact information at the end of this. And you're, you're you know, obviously very open to a phone call. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they can also go to my website and set up an appointment, chat with any time. No, no pressure, no obligation, just answer your questions. But the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is like maybe the husband is in this instance, let's say the, the working spouse is not very healthy and like, Hey, I might die early. So therefore I'm going to take my benefit at age 62 where the, and then what they don't realize is that them taking a lower benefit early will permanently reduce the survivor benefit mm. when they do pass away. So like the stats are like 98% of survivor benefits are paid to women and 80% of those live on average of 14 years longer than oh. the deceased spouse. Wow. So it is a huge deal to not only think about it in terms of, Hey, what's the best benefit for me, but also, Hey, wait a second. Now I've got to also, my decision is going to dictate what's the benefit for my spouse as well. Yeah, that's huge. That, that, it's, a, it's kind it's of a difficult to think about. I mean, as far as trying to put all those pieces in place, but maximizing your overall benefits, I mean, it is huge because I don't know if they, what do they call it? The widow's tax or death tax or, or whatever. But when a spouse dies, somebody's social security is probably getting cut in half, right? Yeah. The in, overall income is probably getting cut. In yeah. Yeah. The income is, and, and that's why I really also is coordinating when we run help people, what we do is we do the, what if scenario, mm -hmm. well, if this spouse passed away, what would it look like? Or if the other spouse passed away, what would it look like? And knowing working through those options. And so you really have to think of things in that, in that fashion. Yeah. Uh, to, and coordinating all this with your other income as well. well yeah. That is, was my is also question. extremely What's that? Uh, that was my next question, because you, you started this off saying that people need to be thinking about Social Security as an asset, right? So That's right. you have other assets. So how how does that play into the other assets that you have, whether it's a 401k or maybe, you know, Lord willing, somebody has a pension still. <laughs> you know, those are kind of gone, but that'd be the diamond in the rough. There's right? not many people have pensions now. Seriously. So I mean, uh, so it's got to work in conjunction with other assets, other things that you've got. How does that work best. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times people will say, well, Hey, I want to retire early. Therefore I need to take social security early. And that's not necessarily true. All right. So what you could, what you maybe can do, especially for retirees who have 401k assets and other types of, of, of retirement plan assets, what they can do is bridge the gap to maximize social security. And what does that really mean? <laughs> Basically what that means is start using your current assets as income to retire the day that you want to retire mm -hmm. while deferring your social security benefit and maximizing that for not only your life, but maybe your spouse's life as well. Mm. Okay. Um, and that, that there's a big benefit that in a few different ways, <laughs> number one is every year you delay, as we previously discussed, that um, your social security benefit goes up by 8% per year, all right? And then also, so the larger and larger your social security benefit, the more tax efficient that benefit will be overall in your re retirement income. And let me explain, is social security is very tax efficient. Generally, 85% of it's taxable and 15% 15 is tax-free. So you really want that as high as possible. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is when you're taking out a lot of times retirees are what in what I call like the retirement tax valley. So they may have high income when they're working. And then when they retire, they may at, at least taxably may be in a lower income bracket. That's a perfect time or could be a perfect time for them to start using those pre-tax income at lower tax rates. Okay. Hmm. This is also going to give you a benefit of 
when you're required to take the required minimum distribution at age 72, that requirement is going to be lower. So mm-hmm. they're not, they're not going to be forced as quickly into higher and higher tax brackets down the road. Gotcha. That makes sense because they've, they've taken some out of that account prior. Yeah, that's right. They're using the pre-tax money in their lower tax years simultaneously increasing their social security benefit because they're delaying and because they're smart and they listen to the right people. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, it also reduces the required minimum distribution down the road. Yeah. No, no, no. We touched on what happens when somebody passes, but before that happens, I know that there's also some, some pretty interesting rules when it comes to divorcees. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. So, so, and <laughs> it's funny. I actually had a, a phone call. This person called in off of a webinar that I did. And I was asking him, Hey, are you married? You divorced? And he says, why'd you ask that question? And I was like, well, if, if you were married for a certain period of time, which is over 10 years and, um, and you're, you may be able to claim a benefit off of your ex-spouse. And, and he was like, what really? So like, yeah, he's like, well, I don't, that I didn't apply to me, but my sister does. So I talked to the sister, no kidding. I talked to the sister and gave her the scenarios. And she's like, my goodness, I can claim off my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Now you got to be married for at least 10 years, currently not married. And, and your benefits, your spousal benefit would need to be higher than your own work record. So those are a couple of different things that, that you need to be, to be able to qualify for the divorce spouse benefit. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's good news though, because again, people get divorced for all sorts of reasons and we're not even going to go down that rabbit hole. However, I know that there's a lot of people that have you know been surprised by a divorce and all of a sudden they're, they're suddenly single, if you will. And, um, that's not fair in a lot of cases. So it's nice to be able to, you know, make sure that they have a, a an equal stake in the, the life that they had before, right? So if somebody stayed home and raised the kids and didn't work and right. didn't accumulate a whole lot and so on and so forth, and then right. all of a sudden somebody runs off to find somebody younger, which is terrible, right. get the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and now here's a side note. Now I was like, well, hey, well, is it going to affect my, my, my former spouse if I take the spousal benefit? No. The spouse, the spite stops. All right, yeah. <laughs> There's no spite and they're not going to be notified or anything like that. It's okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Sure. Well, I mean, we, we've covered a lot so far. Um, what else do we need to know? So a couple of the things that, that re- retirees we need to know about social security is that there's thing, something called a cost of living adjustment. Social security increases Typically every year, there's only been a couple of times in history where that that didn't happen. And and a lot of times people think that mistakenly so that they need to have the benefit being paid to them now to get the cost of living adjustment. And that is not true. So if you look, go to ssd.gov and and look at your social security statement, every year you will, should see a cost of living adjustment on your estimated benefit. So fear not. You can delay your social security benefit and you will get your cost of living adjustment. So that's important for people to know. A lot of times, here's one other thing that I forgot to mention is that a lot of times people want to take it early because they fear that the social security is going to run out of money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. I mean, that's, and there's all kinds of drama around that. And that's understandable. And truth be told, if they don't do anything different, the social security trust fund may run out of money as it sits now. Now, there's a few different ways that the Social Security can make this right. Well, number one, they can delay benefits for, for people and still full retirement age. For some people at 67, maybe they'll do it at 68, 69, or 70. They can also increase the, the taxes on Social Security. If you're self-employed, then I think it's 3.4% of your earnings up to an earnings cap, and I think it's around $147,000, $149,000. Every every little paycheck you get goes into the Social Security benefit. If they raise that cap. So Jeremy, and and again, this is just my opinion, my brain kind of getting all fuzzy over here. Longevity is is a huge issue, right? Longevity in, in, in general is a big issue. People are living longer. So don't you think it's gonna be something where they're really gonna have to take a look at that retirement age and say, 
look, we, you know, we set this in place when people were living, to, you know, on average to 85. Well, now it's 90 or whatever the number is, right? I have no idea what the true number is, but I just know that longevity is an issue. So don't you think it's reasonable that they're going to raise that age? It, it could be. Yeah. And it, it, you're talking about raise the age for full retirement age? Correct. Benefit? Full retirement age. It, yes. Yeah, that's right. And typically they're not going to do that for people who are on the cusp of getting retired. Mm -hmm. They're very likely going to raise it for people who are currently maybe 10 years old, 20 years old, or two it, years yeah. old. So, and, and, and by the way, that's more politically palatable too. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that's, right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so taking it early is these fears of, Hey, the social security is going to run out of money or, or, or they're going to push the benefit later. If you're on the cusp of retirement, it's very likely not going to affect you uh, um, at all, but it may affect your grandchildren mm -hmm. or your children let's say. And, and so, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. And here's how I've always thought about it because I've got my friends and I've talked about it. I think everybody kind of talks about it at some point, looking at the U S debt clock, you know, and the things that, you know, are, are there that kind of scare the snot out of us. Um, we wonder about social security and when it's going to be around, but then we also, you know, my, my thought has always been, look, if the politicians want to be reelected, the, the, the largest voting turnout group normally is, you know, senior citizens or people that are you know, around that retirement age. And we, you want to talk about people coming out in droves to vote people out who are not interested in saving social security. Um, yeah, yeah I, I just don't see it failing altogether. Obviously, there may be some adjustments, like you said, but bottom right. line is that if politicians want to be reelected, they better focus on what's important to the people that are electing them. That's true. And here's the thing, even if they did cut social security benefits, everything that we said before on this call, on this um, podcast is holds true. Just the, the numbers may be different. Instead of it, social security benefit being a $750,000 asset, it might be a $650,000 asset, but the, you know, the cost of the, the delayed retirement credits you get still go up by 8% per year, yeah. which is a big deal. I mean, this is a big deal. And, and here's the thing the typically the break-even age is 81, but the average age of a man is is uh, that uh, is passing away is around 83, mm -hmm. and and a and a woman's 85. And get this is like a 65-year-old healthy couple right now, a 66% chance of one of them living to age 90, mm -hmm. and a 35% chance of one of them living to 95. So that's a big deal. And so every year you live past that break-even age, it's not only beneficial for yourself, but it will be even more beneficial for your surviving spouse. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, I mean, think of it like this. You want to put the odds in your favor, right? Hopefully everybody wears their seatbelt <laughs> because, mm -hmm. hey, if the odds are you're wearing your seatbelt is going to be better for you than if you don't. And, and so this is a, a great way for, for people to put more odds in their favor for making the right decision. Yeah. And, and, you know, I know that your, your general audience is folks that have multiple, not necessarily multiple streams of income, but hopefully in retirement, they'll have multiple streams of income and, and you do a lot of planning. And so, like I said, we're going to give some contact information here in a little bit, but one thing that I've noticed a lot more is trying to use the young folks vernacular side hustles, right? There's a lot of older folks that are doing some side hustles to be able to not have to draw off of certain accounts, not have to do things. They're finding hobbies that they love and that they're able to make a little extra cash at, right? So whether that's some sort of projects or art or personally, Jeremy, I, I have gotten into building fountains. I love water. And, and so I don't know why I live in Nebraska, but whatever. So I love water, <laughs> right? So I love to build fountains. And I, I could see that being something that I would do as a hobby slash a little bit of extra income, you know, in the future, if I wanted to do this and delay taking out of any other accounts or whatever, just kind of some planning stuff. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. There's two things I want to mention to that. The number one thing people do when they retire is go back to work, but they go back to work. I know that sounds crazy. They unretire. Yeah. They, um, but they go back to do it in a way that they really enjoy. Exactly. All right. Hey, I'm going to be a consultant and only deal with this, this, and this, and this is what I love. And, and that's fine. So the second point being is that when people do have another activity and they're engaged, whether that be building fountain, fountains or driving for Uber or consulting, it gives them mental stimulation. And mm -hmm. so their, their, their mental, their lust for life is maintained. 
And then they can also step away and do the leisure activities that they want to do, whether that be traveling or whether that be gardening or whatever that case may be in their mind, what they wanted to do during retirement. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that that's, that's incredibly important. My father at 82, it was probably five years ago. He went and worked for Walmart just because he was bored. <laughs> he worked like three days a week. And really, I don't, I don't even know why they paid him, but he just kind of walked around and talked to people. He loved it, right? He loved doing that. And he's like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore because he found a place to volunteer. So now he volunteers two days a week at a, at a, like a, it's like a food bank. He loves it because again, he gets to talk to people. He doesn't get paid in that situation. He got paid at Walmart, but doesn't get paid in the volunteer, but he doesn't need the money, you know, but he needs that mental stimulation. He needs that connection to people. Um, right. You know, if anything through COVID has taught us something is that, we need to be around other people, you know, so relationships are important. I think they're even more important in retirement, especially when somebody retires, like you were talking about, they like to retire early. Ooh, there goes an identity a lot of times, or it goes a, a subset of friends, a, a group of friends that maybe they're not retiring early. So they're all still going to work. And now you're sitting at home going, where are all my friends at? Well, they're working. That's right. That, that's exactly <laughs> right there. And, and, and living your best life really is about you know, being happy and, yeah. and, and, and focused and have a purpose, whether that be, you know, making sure that you're, you know, exercising, eating healthy, doing things that are mentally stimulating, giving back to the community, whatever that may be. I found that the happiest retirees are the ones that are able to do a combination of all of those. Yes. And they show up in different ways for everybody. Yeah. And, and I, I think the only thing more important than having purpose in retirement is having that plan. Because if you don't have the plan, then you're, how are you going to find a purpose if you have to be yeah, grinding or yeah. whatever? So how, how do people get a hold of you so that they can yeah. actually. So they can, they can, they can, about. um, yeah, thank you. Uh, they, they can call us at 843-970-1049 and, um, set up a phone, uh, set up an appointment at any point in time. They can be anywhere in the country. It doesn't matter. We just do a phone call. I help answer your questions right then and there, if possible. Um, or if we need to, we can do an in-office meeting in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, or we can do Zoom. It, it, there's no no worries about that. But but a lot of times people have take look at this monster, whether it be retirement planning or Social Security, and, and, and they try to avoid it. And it's okay. I, that's normal. But work with somebody or at least ask questions of somebody who's a trusted resource because they may be able to help guide you through that that fog, so to speak, mm -hmm. to help you make their best decision for you and, um, and, you know, make maximum use of the assets that you have and the decisions you have to make. Yeah. Well, now I'm thinking about we just need to do these podcasts in person in Myrtle Beach. Come on water, down, buddy. Water, man. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for your time today. This has been fantastic. I'm going to plant a seed. However, I would love in the future for you to cover a podcast, maybe with a guest, if you've got a guest in mind, uh, that would be about finding your purpose in retirement and, and helping people think about that and know what maybe what their purpose could be and just give some people food for thought on that. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be a really good, I mean, and I'm going to, Throw this out here in the universe. Maybe have a client or two. Yeah, in yeah. retirement, that'd be great. People need examples. Perfect. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it, buddy. You bet. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Retire Happy Podcast with Jeremy Finger. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Jeremy comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And this really makes it easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. And we'd really appreciate and humbly ask you to review and rate the podcast as that actually helps people find the information. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Riverbend Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Retire Happy Podcast with certified financial planner, Jeremy Finger. If you have any questions, please visit us at www.riverbendwealthmanagement.com or call us at 843-970-1043. And remember, click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.
Investment advice offered through Stratus Wealth Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor doing business as Riverbend Wealth Management. The opinions voiced in this podcast are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a decision.